Wait, 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 I know LEGO Technic isn't for everyone, and if that's you, I implore you to make like a rover and persevere through this video as I attempt to tell you why this set really is out of this world. Hello all, I'm Josh, this is Josh Build Stuff, and today I am very, very excited because we're talking about this all-new Mars Rover LEGO Technic set. This is the NASA Mars Rover Perseverance. This set was just released in August 2023. It costs $100, contains 1,132 pieces, and is rated for ages 10 plus. As for most of those details, great piece count, great price. I think that age recommendation is a little off on this one. 10 plus, those must be some very smart 10 year olds to be able to build this set, or I'm a very below average 35 year old, which is more than likely. Like I said, I'm excited about this set. I like space, so I'm excited to tell you all about this set. And because of that excitement, this review may not be as ridiculous or irreverent as usual, which are coincidentally my two favorite categories on Netflix. Initial thoughts, this build is a great size. As you can see it in front of me, the build was challenging yet rewarding. This is actually a pretty decent replica of the real thing, which we'll be looking at as we go through this. And the play features slash technic functionality on this one are truly beautiful and incredible and complicated and I appreciate them very much. A brief history of perseverance that may lend some context to this set. Well, NASA wanted to explore Mars. They sent a couple of smaller rovers, but they wanted to send larger, more complicated rovers. Naturally, to succeed in a mission this complicated, you would need to plan it pretty precisely. So NASA builds these rovers here on Earth, and how do you get a rover to Mars? Well, the same way I get my baby to sleep. You rock it. In 2012, we sent the Curiosity rover to Mars, which curiously looks a lot like the Perseverance rover. That's because it is the Perseverance's big brother. LEGO actually made an official set of that Curiosity. It was in system, not in Technic. It was much smaller. It was a part of LEGO Ideas before it was LEGO Ideas when it was still Inspector Clouseau or whatever. And that set is now very expensive on the secondary market. I think it goes for like 300 bucks. And like I said, it's much smaller than this one. It was July 30th, 2020, around midday. So like launch time, the Perseverance was loaded aboard a rocket and they launched it to begin its six month journey from Earth to Mars. Know what else was going on in July 2020? We were in month five of our two week quarantine. And when scientists said to distance yourself from others, the Perseverance did better than the rest of us combined because it put 226 million miles between it and any other living being. The rover arrived on Mars in February 2021 as we were quickly approaching the one year mark of our two week quarantine. It arrived at the Jezero Crater, which could have at one point contained a lake about the size of Lake Tahoe. And given the choice, I also would rather have spent millions of dollars to explore a barren lake than to actually have to visit Lake Tahoe. I realize that I'm more familiar with this rover than I thought because I've actually watched this rover on Mars in Power Wash Simulator for the Xbox. That's a game that I played completely unironically and got 100% of the achievements in completely unironically. And after having filmed this clip, I realized that there's actually new DLC levels based on SpongeBob SquarePants, and so I had to download those, get 100% of the achievements there, and that made this video take a little longer than I would have expected. Hey, I said this video was going to be slightly less irreverent than usual, not that it would lack irreverence completely. I did not truly appreciate the complexity of this build until I finished it and I started looking up details of the real Perseverance rover and then I realized just how many of those details were represented and represented pretty well on this replica. So I'd like to share some of those details with you to hopefully help you gain some of that same appreciation. This big protrusion coming off the back, that is actually the energy source. It is officially called the Multi-Mission Radioisotope Thermoelectric Generator, but in layman's terms, it's a plutonium reactor. Are you telling me this sucker's nuclear? That's exactly what I'm telling you. Rather, it's powered by the heat of a decaying plutonium, but in any case, that's where the power comes from. This is a much better means of producing power than some earlier rovers, which fittingly relied on solar systems. This mast here is where a lot of the cameras and sensors and antennas live. The cameras are represented by these clear bricks, and unlike me, this is actually very articulate, which you would expect because it does work for NASA. The suspension, we will talk about in a minute. I want to let the suspension build a little first. The wheels on the real rover are aluminum while they have titanium spokes for strength. The wheels on this version are plastic and the spokes are also plastic, also the rest of it is plastic. 
it's made of Lego. This big gray bar across the top actually represents the differential. That's on the real thing too. The real rover is equipped with 23 cameras, some of which are represented here with clear pieces again. Some on the mast, a couple of front and rear hazard cams are represented. But even with those 23 cameras, can this rover see why kids love the taste of cinnamon toast crunch? Sorry, that's some of that irreverence sneaking through. A standout feature here is this protruding articulated sampling arm. I actually have my own sampling arm. I bring it with me every time I go to Costco. It's right here. On the end of that sampling arm are some of the instruments used to analyze the Martian surface. The real thing is incredibly complex and this barely scratches the surface of that complexity. But speaking of scratching the surface, we do have a coring drill included here. And then on one side, we've got a little UV spectrometer, again, represented with some clear pieces. And on the back side there, we've even got a little X-ray imager, which X-rays the Martian surface. But can it see why kids love to taste it? No. Once the drill collects those coring samples, it deposits them into this little sample collector represented by a wheel on the front there. This looks a little different than the sample collector that my urologist uses, but it serves the same purpose. It's a place to store whatever is collected from the surface or beneath. I think this single piece on the rear of the rover, that's supposed to represent the ground penetrating radar, which literally maps the surface and below as the rover drives around. Speaking of barely scratching the surface, that doesn't even touch the surface. A couple of the pieces sticking up on top, those are different antenna that are represented on the real thing. And of course the suspension, now that the suspense is sufficiently built, it is built on a rocker bogey system, which is represented in Lego Technic here very well considering the complexity of the real thing. This is how the suspension works on the real rover. Basically the rear two wheels are attached to the front wheel by a single arm which is attached at the articulation point of the rear two wheels. This allows the wheels to articulate in all kinds of funky configurations when driving over an uneven surface. And I know nobody likes stickers but they are used very sparingly here and there are a few that are significant enough to point out. Like the one on the very top. It says 10,932,295 explorers. That is a plaque that's on the actual rover and it's got three little silicon chips on which are engraved the names of those 10 million people you could submit your name and have it actually sent to Mars. If you were to try to read all of the names off of those silicon chips, you would run out of air because it's on Mars right now and you can't breathe there. This little color wheel sticker here looks very insignificant on this rover. On the real thing, it's a very complex, kind of beautiful looking plate there. And that's actually what the rover's cameras point at to color calibrate, to make sure that they have correct colors when they're imaging on Mars. On the back, this snake and earth sticker that represents a plaque that's on the real rover that is a tribute to all the healthcare workers that were fighting COVID, which was of course going on during construction and launch and operation of this rover. We would be remiss not to mention this little guy, of course, the faithful companion to the Perseverance rover. It's Tails from Sonic the Hedgehog, better known as the Ingenuity Helicopter. This Technic version is actually a pretty good representation of the real thing because it had to be very small and simple and lightweight as it was hitching a ride on the bottom of the Perseverance rover. This was the first powered flight on a foreign planet. We sent a little helicopter to Mars and it flew. It can only fly for about 90 seconds at a time, which doesn't sound like a lot, but how many seconds can you fly for? Not that many, right? It's impressive. This is also a fun little accessory. My kids enjoyed flying this thing around and exploring all parts of my house. And I mean all parts of my house. The functionality or play features on this set, that's where the technicness really starts to show through. Outside of this, it might just look like a big old box, but within that box, there's some complex stuff going on. As you can see at the rear of this thing, there are two tiny little knobs and some directions on what those knobs will do. Well, from the very back, of this set, linking all through the middle of this set, we get to some gears which control that uh, that sampling arm. One goes sideways and one goes up and down. And it's crazy how much is hidden in the body of this set to be able to accomplish that. On top of a very cool suspension system, this rover also has steering and the wheels move in such a cool unique way. On the top of this rover there is a single lever and gear combo and if you move it forward and backwards that moves the wheels uh, from an outward to an inward angle. If they're completely inward the rover can rotate on those wheels just like the real thing. If you move that lever forward the rover can move forward and backwards and then turning that gear well turns the wheels and it doesn't seem that crazy right? It's a drivetrain system but think about it there's a single lever on top that is controlling all six of the wheels and the articulation of those wheels at the same 
time. And now you can look along the sides of the suspension there and there are again linkages between every single wheel and that center articulation point. So those are the main moving bits of this set, but of course you can still play with this thing as if you're exploring the surface of a planet and LEGO has made that play even easier because they have included this set in the already existing LEGO Technic AR app. AR of course standing for augmented reality in which case you can point your phone's camera at this set and do little missions in it and I don't know drive around and learn about the different parts of this set and different things going on on Mars and things that are not even represented on this model that are, are, are part of the real Perseverance rover and let me tell you my kids have had a lot of fun playing with this feature of the app and they're also learning about the Martian rover and stuff and now they like things that dad likes even more and honestly that makes the set worth it by itself. And speaking of this set being worth it, there's a lot here for $100, even just in the size of this set, functionality aside, but all of the details and the accuracy and that size and the helicopter included all make this set incredibly worth $100 in my opinion. But here's the kicker. I didn't know all of these facts and features and details of the real Perseverance rover before having bought and built this set. I watched so many videos and read so many articles and viewed galleries to try to compare this model to the real thing and the crazy amount of, of complicated ingenuity, pun intended, that went into the construction of the real thing here and it made me appreciate this set so much more. Open your mind. Don't let the technic intimidate you or the science or subject matter bore you. This is the history of humankind happening right now in your hands. And if you ask me, this one is going to go down in history as one of the all-time greats, both the real thing residing on Mars and its fun little facsimile that could be in your own home. I've been Josh from Josh Build Stuff. Keep exploring. It's a fun catchphrase. I should use that in the future.